Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ and A video right here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel and No DQ and A videos affiliate RingsideNews.com. Coming off the second edition of Raw of the new new era, the new brand split era, with an appearance at the end by SmackDown's Randy Orton. So already, one week after the brand split started, we have SmackDown superstars invading Raw. What does this mean for the future? Who knows? But got your questions here and I will do my best to answer and discuss the current happenings in WWE. First question comes from Moneymaker. What were your thoughts on Randy Orton coming to Raw when the brand split was only in effect for two weeks? I was hoping WWE would wait longer before having guys appear on the other show, but with SummerSlam coming up and Randy Orton versus Brock Lesnar needing some build, I'm not really surprised, I guess. I mean, a lot of people thought that WWE would have one of these guys appear on the other show to confront the opponent for SummerSlam. But yeah, it, it really does water down the brand extension already and it's barely started. I think that if you had gone several months without any kind of interaction between Raw and SmackDown superstars, it could have made a bit of an impact. This to me just wasn't that big of a deal. That's my personal opinion. I know a lot of people liked the segment. They liked Randy Orton hitting the RKO out of nowhere when Heyman said Orton will never hit it. And then you had the security come out, Stephanie and Mick Foley trying to get Randy Orton with the security and he took off into the crowd. This, this just would have been way more effective if something like this had been done down the line. Doing it one, two weeks after the brand extension started just did not feel like it was that big of a deal in my opinion. Whatever. Does it mean the brand split is ruined? Not necessarily, but... I, I am not really getting my hopes up about this brand split. Week 2 of Raw, definitely not as strong as week 1. You can put a new coat of paint on the car, but it still has the same engine. You still have the same writing team. And to me, it was your typical Raw from the past 3, 4, 5 years. That That's what it felt like to me. So I'm just going along for the ride. but. I was not captivated by this segment. This one comes from Codezilla HD. Do you think Brock Lesnar will appear on SmackDown Live? Would not surprise me. In fact, I'm almost expecting it now. I'm, I'm expecting Brock Lesnar to show up and hit the F5 on Randy Orton. So it'll be a trade-off, you know? That'll be the storyline leading up to SummerSlam. I actually think there could have been a more creative way to do this. Maybe do just video packages and have Orton and Lesnar not touch each other until SummerSlam. I think that that would have been effective. There are other ways that WWE could have done this without having Lesnar appear on SmackDown or Randy Orton appearing on Raw one, two weeks after the brand extension started. So yeah, I do think it will happen, and I'm not even going to get angry about it. I'm just going to be like, whatever. At this point, I'm not really thrilled about the match, so hopefully they can sell it to me. I'm not sure if Lesnar hitting the F5 is going to make me want to see this match. But whatever. Like last year, it's not about the storyline. It's about the two superstars going at it, and they really don't need a storyline. You know, that was the argument last year with Lesnar versus Undertaker, you know, I was saying, why can't these guys have a compelling storyline? And everyone else is saying, well, they're just having a match. They're two big superstars and they really don't need a storyline. In some cases, this is true. Last year, I felt Undertaker and Lesnar was lacking something. And this year, I feel Orton versus Lesnar is lacking something so far. They still have a couple of weeks left. Maybe they'll turn it around for me. But I'm not sure if them just exchanging their finishing moves is going to cut it for me personally. For a lot of people, it very well may do the job. This one comes from Jake. Is Roman Reigns versus Rusev just another attempt to get Roman over with the fans? They're having him beat the guy that hates America. Yeah, this is the latest attempt by WWE because they're never going to give up. 
WWE is just like John Cena. They will keep fighting the fight and they will do everything they can to get Roman Reigns over. And the latest attempt now is to make Roman Reigns this babyface American hero who overcomes the heel evil foreigner. Gee, we've never seen this storyline before. Some people see it as Roman Reigns being demoted. To me, that's not the case at all. This is just a way to rebuild Roman Reigns as a babyface. I mean, that's what it is. And, you know, people are getting on my case on Twitter when I said the fans will still boo Roman. They did cheer him, for the most part, in Atlanta. Uh, granted, it's Atlanta, Georgia. The Olympics were held there in 1996. Roman Reigns played football in Atlanta. But whatever. If Roman Reigns gets over as a babyface in Brooklyn, New York at SummerSlam, and the American flag is waved and everyone's cheering for Reigns, then WWE would have succeeded. Will that happen? I don't know. I hope the fans out there are smart enough to see through it, but, you know, as people are telling me on Twitter, I need to just enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I apologize for being salty tonight. I just wasn't thrilled with Raw. After such a stellar show last week, I felt that this week was just very mediocre uh, by Raw standards. And, um, you know, I was hoping for a better show. I guess my expectations were too high. And I got this question here from Evan King. Roman was pretty over tonight on Raw. Do you think that being in the mid-card for a while will help him regain some popularity? It might help a little bit, but the bottom line is Roman Reigns is being miscast as a babyface, as the American hero. That's not his character, in my opinion. But I'm not the only person that said it. Jim Ross has said it. There have been a lot of people in the business that have said it. I think Roman Reigns needs an edge, and they had the opportunity to turn him heel, and it's clear, it's, it's clear as day, maybe that's why I'm so frustrated, it's clear as day now that they're not even considering the heel turn. You know, he lost the matches because of the suspension, and now he's on the rebound. He'll most likely beat Rusev at SummerSlam, and he'll be the American hero, and this will be the beginning of his rise back to the top in WWE. And WWE will hope that fans will just forget about the suspension and give him another chance. Um, I do not hate Roman. I'm not against Roman, despite what some people on Twitter think. I just think that the direction of this character is, again, going against what a lot of fans want to see. And he could do so much better if he was given an edge and let his character be a heel, just do something different. But again, it's going back to John Cena 2.0. They're trying to make him like John Cena. It, it, it's basically a carbon copy of last year. Rusev was the US champion. John Cena was the conquering American hero. We got same storyline here, just Roman Reigns in place of John Cena. Not really a fan of it. I know some people out there will disagree with me, but that's just my opinion. I, I've seen it before many times over the years, and I'm bored with it, honestly. I mean, I'm, I'm somewhat bored with Orton versus Lesnar, but Reigns versus Rusev, to me, it's a bathroom break match, and that's just how I feel. Uh, there are other matches on that show that I will much rather see, like Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins, or even Dean Ambrose versus Dolph Ziggler. Rusev versus Reigns does nothing for me. Reigns being the conquering hero does nothing for me. So, it is what it is. That is my opinion. Take it or leave it. All right, this one comes from Sean T. Flick. Huge fan of Becky Lynch, probably my favorite. But why should I care for her when she's on SmackDown Live without a title to compete for? That is a very valid question, and that is one argument for having a women's title on SmackDown. So... The women competitors, the ones that the fans really like at least, like Becky Lynch and Natalya, they have something to fight for. I would prefer if WWE had the women's champion competing on both shows, and that may still happen, because in general, I'm not a huge fan of WWE adding more titles at this point. I think they have enough already, and with adding a second world title, you really do not need to be adding more championships at this stage of the game. That's my opinion, at least. I know some people would be fine with there being titles for each, each division, like the women's division on each brand and 
even the tag teams, having a tag team championship on each brand. Some people would like that. I'm not one of those people, but it would be nice if Becky and Natalia and maybe a few of the other women on SmackDown would actually have something they're fighting over for. This one comes from Wade versus Slade. Now that SmackDown is on Tuesday, will they bring back the European title or bring back the TV title or tag team and women's title for SmackDown? It could happen. We could see WWE have two sets of championships, two sets of tag team championships, two sets of women's championships. I wasn't a fan of it several years ago, but it could happen. If WWE was going to bring back another championship, I would actually prefer if WWE introduced a new championship and had a whole new concept. I, I'd rather they do something new than go back to the past. To me, bringing back the European title or the hardcore title, I get that a lot. People say, will WWE ever bring back the hardcore title? To me, it, it's not the right era. It, it's a different era and WWE doesn't do the extreme hardcore matches like they used to. And the European title, I mean, to me, it's, it's just old news. I'd rather WWE introduce a new title or not introduce any more titles at this time. Got this one here from Eric Cruz. Will Nikki go to SmackDown to be with John Cena and be the number one heel in the women's division there or will fans cheer for her because of the injury? I would think some fans would definitely cheer for her. I mean, she might get a mixed reaction and she could very well go back to being a heel and that, that could work for her. You could have her feud with Becky over over a women's title maybe, if there's going to be a second women's title on SmackDown. I think it would make more sense for Nikki to be on the SmackDown brand. Number one, as you mentioned, to be on the same brand as John Cena. Also because she could be the top heel or be a top star on the SmackDown brand. If she was on Raw, I think that people would be upset if she was getting a spot above Sasha Banks or Charlotte even. I think that people would prefer Nikki to be on SmackDown and let her work with the Eva Marie's and, and all that. We'll see. It, it, it does seem more likely that she'll end up on SmackDown. SmackDown seems to be more of the, the diva brand. You know, if Raw is more about the women's wrestling, SmackDown could be more about the divas and, and more of the, the, the total diva storylines and that sort of thing. All right, this next one comes from The Man Josh. Hey Aaron, do you think Sasha won the championship early just to lose it at SummerSlam versus Charlotte? No, that was not the reason why Sasha won last week on Raw. It was done to build up the viewership for Raw and have something noteworthy take place on that show so Raw would have some momentum going into this new, new era, this post-draft era, it was done for Raw's sake. I think that it's unlikely Charlotte will win the title back. I expect Sasha Banks to have a lengthy run as women's champion. I would have her stay champion until WrestleMania. Let her defend against Bayley at WrestleMania and have Bayley win the title and get her big WrestleMania moment then. That's what I would do at least. Now that Sasha's champion, she should have a lengthy reign. People have been wanting to see her get the big push for a long time now, and she's finally getting it, so let her have her moment and have her run as champion. This one comes from Hot Rod 276 With the reports of Alberto Del Rio being unhappy with WWE, do you see him going to TNA and taking Paige with him? Unless TNA all of a sudden came into a lot of money and they could pay him the big bucks, I would not expect that to happen. I'm pretty sure TNA made a play at Del Rio when he was a free agent and he did not go to TNA. And I doubt TNA will be able to afford him. I think that if he left WWE, he would just keep working in Mexico, maybe doing more work with Lucha Underground and that sort of thing. Time will tell if he actually does leave WWE. If he's making good money, you know, he might stick it out, even if he's not getting a big push. Um, he might end up leaving if he feels that his career is going nowhere. But at the end of the day, he's got to do what's best for him financially. And if Paige is happy in WWE, then he might stick it out. If, if they split up or if she decides 
she wants out, maybe they'll leave together and there'll be a package deal somewhere. They'll be able to get more money as a couple working for independent promotions or promotions overseas. TNA, I think, is a long shot unless they somehow are able to afford Del Rio, which I think is unlikely. This one comes from Grant. Hey Aaron, could you see Nakamura beating Samoa Joe at TakeOver to let Joe have a main roster feud with Finn Balor? I expect Nakamura to win the title at the TakeOver event. Samoa Joe will most likely and should be the next guy to debut on the main roster. Nakamura should be there too, quite frankly. But I could see Joe, since he's been in NXT longer, he gets called up to the main roster first and maybe by next year, maybe right after WrestleMania. Actually, that's when I would do it. Right after WrestleMania, I would have Nakamura be the big, the big main roster call-up right after WrestleMania 33. And Joe should definitely get on the main roster as soon as possible. I would have him come up right after SummerSlam. This one comes from Jason. With the rumor of John Cena not working Backlash and SmackDown so low on star power, how do you think it will affect Backlash? Hopefully WWE brings in a few more of the past superstars to fill up the roster and with American Alpha being added to the mix, I think Backlash would do okay without John Cena. It is what it is. Backlash is going to be yet another WWE pay-per-view and no doubt these single branded pay-per-views are going to feel a bit watered down but it's the 9.99 era now we're not paying 50 bucks for a pay-per-view so the star power honestly really means less than it ever has in the past WWE does not have to sell people on pay-per-views for $50 or $60 whatever they were charging for high definition now Every show is $9.99, WWE could just throw a random card together and people will tune in because it's part of the network package. They really do not need that star power anymore. Would it make the product hotter? Yes, but in terms of getting people to watch Backlash, they could just have a WWE title match and just throw together some matches and people will watch. Got this one here from Marcus S. Who are some overrated talkers from the past and present? That's really hard to answer. That's a very good question. I think, and this is just my opinion, the number one most overrated talker would probably be Shane Douglas. I know a lot of people are very fond of ECW and that period, but I think Shane Douglas's promos got over because of the fact that he made a lot of insider references and that's what got the internet fans all worked up and saying this was an all-time classic promo you know when he threw down the NWA title that got a lot of people interested and it was it was well booked and it was well executed but I think a lot of people could get over doing a promo like that where they rebel against the system and trash the other wrestling promotions and do the internet smart mark friendly promos. A lot of people could get over doing that stuff. Shane Douglas had very good delivery, but to say he was one of the all-time greatest talkers, you know, I, I think is pushing it a little bit. He went to WCW and really did not make much of an impact in WCW. Granted, it was hard for just about anybody to make much of an impact in WCW by that time, but still, I think that he got over because of the fact that he was using all those insider terms. And maybe even CM Punk a little bit. I mean, the pipe bomb was a classic promo, and he did deliver it very well. But he did make all those insider references, and that's what got people popping. Uh, CM Punk did do some memorable promos after that, no doubt. And CM Punk's a great talker, but you know, to say he's at the Rock's level or even Steve Austin's level, I I'm not sure I would go that far with CM Punk. And some people might disagree with me. Some people might agree because they're bitter about CM Punk leaving. Uh, you know, it's, it's a hard question to answer. Who would you say is the most overrated as far as promos go? That'll do it for this edition of No DQ and a video. Thanks as always for watching. Send in your questions at twitter.com using the hashtag PAIV. 
Follow me at Aaron Rift on Twitter as well as Facebook. You can follow me on Facebook or add me on Facebook. And stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest regarding SummerSlam and the other events in the world of wrestling. See you guys next time.